of Isaiah. Because there's two things that we have here in the rapture. The first one is called the banner, which is the actual sign of Jesus Christ. Um, remember, it's in both Luke 21 and in Matthew 24, Jesus says, you will see my sign in the sky, and the Son of Man will appear. Well, that is in the same way that Isaiah is using the word, you will see the banner. Because the banner in the military was always the sign of where the leadership was. Always the sign of where the king was. So you look to the banner, you knew where the king was. You look to our banner, and you see Jesus Christ, the Son of Man. And in Isaiah 18.3, he says, All of you of the world, you who live on the earth, when the banner is raised on the mountains, you will see it. Doesn't matter where you are, you will see the banner. And when the trumpet sounds, you will hear it. See, those two things will be universally seen and heard by every human living on the face of the earth. The banner, the sign of Christ, and the trumpet, the sound of to call us home, mm -hmm. to rescue us. Okay, now, well, let's just go to the other one in Isaiah, 26, 19. This is very vivid. I think it's a beautiful just um, uh, comparison of words, use of words to give a, a word picture. 26. <clears throat> Nineteen. But your dead will live. Their bodies will rise. Now you see, that's a supernatural promise. Wow. Dead don't live. And their bodies don't rise. They never have. Except Jesus. But we will. And this is a supernatural promise. Your dead will live. And your bodies will rise. You who dwell in the dust, wake up and shout for joy. Your dew is like the dew of the morning. The earth will give birth to its dead. So it's like you look out your window in the early morning and you see this is beautiful sheen of, of dew glistening on the top of the grass. And then you look a couple hours later and it's gone. Uh, when the sun rises and it's gone, and that's that's what that's exactly what Isaiah is in, envisioning the rapture to be, uh, like like the dew we will all rise. I think it's very poignant. Um, now let's go to First Corinthians uh, 15, which is Paul again, and this is like the Thessalonians one. He gives a description again of the details of the rapture. And it may be a tiny bit, it may have a tiny bit of a different view, but it says rel basically the same thing. 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 49. And just as we have borne the likeness of an earthly man, so shall we bear the likeness of the man from heaven. Mm -hmm. This is another promise of the exchange of our body to our glorified body. You're going to see some more of that in the rapture. John has a description of it. Um, there's a description in Isaiah, and there's an excellent one in Philippians, and we'll be looking at those. But here it's saying that the earthly man will now look like the man from heaven. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all change. In a flash, 
in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. Every time you hear the trumpet, because remember the feast of the trumpets in the Jewish festivals of feast is their feast of the rapture. And when they hear the trumpets, they are to go to where the Lord is. And when we hear the trumpet, we will be raptured to go to where the Lord is, to be with him. So in, uh, in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be, ri be raised imperishable. And we will be changed. <clears throat> for the imperishable must close itself in the imperishable and the mortal in the immortal. Um, then it ends with uh, 56 and 58 when, it's, when he quotes a saying out of Hosea in the Old Testament where he says, Death, where is your sting? And death, or the grave, where's your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law, because the law failed man. And it says that we have our laws too. We have our ways of thinking where if we do a bunch of these things and we don't do a bunch of those things, we're good people, and anybody who doesn't do it the way we do it's bad. Uh, and that's what Paul's talking about here. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Now that's Paul's testimony 2,000 years ago and it rings true today, rings true in this room. Um, now let's look at, um, I'm, oh, I, I want to uh, just show you that Jesus, the whole time of the Passover meal, the Last <coughs> Supper, he was thinking about this because this was his last Passover and that's by his choice. And if you go to Luke, Luke 22, uh, verse 15. And Jesus is starting to eat the Passover the night before he goes to uh, to his purging. And remember, the Passover is Friday. That's when he will be purged. So Thursday became his Passover, and that's what we call the Last Supper. That's when he had his Passover. And he tells his disciples this in 15. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat of it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Jesus is not going to have another Passover from that Thursday night until he meets with us in the rapture. And then we, then that Passover is called the, the wedding supper of the Lamb. And I think probably a lot of you have heard of the term the Last Supper. That's Jesus' last Passover on earth. The next Passover he has will be the wedding feast of the Lamb, and it will be with us in heaven. His last one was with the disciples. I'm sure they'll be there too, but it'll be with us. Um, some of the sayings that Jesus says here that are promises of like what we will look like, what we will be like, um, I'm going to, uh, I, I don't see Philippians in my notes. Let's go to Philippians 3. Philippians is right after Galatians, well, right after Ephesians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians. Let's go to Philippians 3. And it's verse 20. 
Yeah, we'll go to verse 20 in Philippians 3. And this is one of the most vivid comments. Now I see it. It's at the very bottom of page 19. Philippians 3, 20 and 21. And Jesus is talking about how the mind of the world is on its, is on its stomach. The mind thinks of its stomach. In other words, the mind thinks of its appetites. The mind thinks of itself. That's all. He said, but, but, we, but we have our minds on other things. And in 20, Paul says, but our citizenship is in heaven. That's who we belong to. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, and I want you to hear this, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform your lowly bodies so that